Hello, my name is Citizen. I'm from uh, the Navi Rainbow Six Siege team. I'm going to teach you how to play IQ. Okay, so one of the things about IQ is that um, her main gadget, she can see electronics uh, in a 20 meter radius. So obviously, with the C4s here, you can see them through the wall without having to actually see them. And this goes with any electronics, whether it be visual scan, visuals uh, like drone scanner, uh, mozzie traps, leasing traps, LMINs, anything electronic in the game. IQ will be able to see them. Okay, so one of the good things about IQ is that she has probably one of the best loadouts in, in the whole of Rainbow Six Siege regarding guns, attachments, you know, all, all of that. So uh, she has the Org A2, which is probably the least favorite weapon out of the three. Uh, it's got quite a low fire rate. The damage is good, uh, but the fire rate and the way that it just feels when it's used is just not as good as the other two. Uh, moving on to the 552 Commando, which is, in my opinion, the best gun for IQ. Um, just for the fact that he has 48 damage, which is insanely high. Uh, zero recoil. Um, uh, the fire rate is the only off-putting thing, but because of the damage output, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you're going to be killing enemies in three bullets with a chest shot anyway. Uh, moving on to the next one is a G8A1. This, uh, this gun actually recently got updated. Uh, it's got an angle grip on it now, which is, um, I mean, people start to like it. I'd probably say it's the favourite. It, depend, it all depends on the playstyle. Like, if you want to be more aggressive, you have 552. But if you want to hold angles, maybe like, pick, like you know, like stay a little bit far back, you need to pick the G8A1. Because uh, for one, it has uh, 50 bullets, which is 20 more than the 552 and the Org. Uh, the fire rate is way higher than the Org and the 552. But the only problem is, is the damage output is not as good, obviously, because uh, it's a lump machine gun, so. But uh, this kind of uh, recently got given the angle grip, which is uh, makes you zoom in faster into your ADS. So basically helps out any gunfire, you know, it's quicker, it's quicker than the 5.2 4 grip, it's quicker than the Org. The Org actually can't, you can't equip any other uh, four grips on it because it comes with a four grip automatically, you can't take it off, you can't fold it or nothing like that, it just stays on there. Uh, regarding the pistol, P12, probably the pe best pistol in the game, apart from Sophia's one, in terms of like damage output and just the way it, yeah, it has 6, 15 bullets as well. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh, my personal preference is I would put muzzle brake on it. Uh, people like you to use silencer when they play IQ, but I don't see the point in it because the, su the suppressor can just get in the way when you're using the IQ gadget and you're trying to shoot stuff. Uh, the P12 doesn't really have very good iron sights. It has pretty poor iron sights to be honest. That's the only bad thing about this gun. Uh, but with muzzle brake, I don't know if it's just a placebo effect, but it seems that I can hit everything a lot easier. Uh, regarding her secondary gadgets, she has breaching charges or claymores. Breaching charges are always good to bring, and so are claymores, so very situational. If you're playing a map like Consulate, you're gonna bring uh, the claymores unless you're f forced to take top, like above control if they're downstairs, you'll take breaching charges. Okay, so the best and worst maps uh, to play IQ on. Um, I'd probably rank Consulate as the best map to play IQ on. Uh, it's a very big map. A lot of the floor is uh, breakable, you know, vertical, and it's very easy uh, to do on this map. You know, you can take a buck every round, break the floor, no matter what, breaching charges. Uh, so that's why IQ is always good, because a lot of people like to run Pulse in this map. They like to run Valkyrie, like to run Echo. Uh, they like to pre-play C4s. Pulse will sometimes roam downstairs trying to C4. Uh, a lot of default things to do on this map is if the enemy does take top floor, teams go downstairs with this information that they can see for the bomb plunder, uh, which is really good. But uh, with the IQ, you can obviously see the information, you can stop them having that information, choose a different spot to plant them rather than the default ones, they'll see for that, and uh, you'll still get the plant off. The second best map I'd rate in is probably Cafe. Uh, the Cafe Thatcher combo is really, really strong in this map, especially for top floor. Uh, you can just you can clear every ADS top floor. Any no matter where the ADS is put top floor, as long as it's placed on the third floor, it doesn't matter. You can just you scan it with the IQ. You throw a factory on the roof, and the ADS is gone. The same aspect as well. This map is very uh, vertical. You know, you take the buck as well. Go below, go above. People like to play C4s once again. It's very easy to hide uh, cams on this map as well. 
Uh, the echo drains are also pretty hard to see considering the ceiling is mostly white on this map so it's virtually impossible to see the echo drains. Uh, I'd say the, the third best map is probably Bank. Once again, Bank is a very big map so it's very easy to hide cameras, echo drones. It's very easy to hide in as well, there's a lot of hiding spots on this map. Uh, it's very good for Vigil, Vigil can play downstairs. Uh, you know, if, if he has his Vigil scanner on, you just IQ him, you can see where he is, hunt him down, kill him. Same with Pulse, you know, Pulse would be mainly used for downstairs and server. You can see if he's pulsing and what part he's pulsing, see if he's giving his team info, information where your team's pushing, stuff like that. Uh, and yeah, like as I said on caf cafe, uh, bank, server room especially, the, because there's, there's a lot of like debris and stuff on the ceiling, it's very hard to see the cameras. Uh, it's very hard to see the echo drones as well, so that's why taking an IQ on this map is always a good choice. The next map I'd probably wait is uh, Villa. The only reason, I mean, it's basically like the other, every single other map, uh, quite a lot of vertical play. The only problem with Villa is it's quite easy to see the cameras, uh, depending on where they're put, obviously. Um, but most of the time, if someone puts a Valkyrie cam in a position on Villa, like it's, you, can, you can see it, unless you put it on like a light or in the floor or whatever. Villa's are quite a weird map because you're not always going to bring the pulse because it's very easy to kill him anyway. Yeah, if you do it downstairs, taking the pulses there, he's going to die no matter what. Like, same with the top floor, like, it's a very easy map just to take control of. The next map I'd probably say is Clubhouse. Uh, Clubhouse is pretty, it's very structured. Um, you don't need the IQ as much as you would consider you need, like, the Thermite Thatcher, Hibana, you know, you need soft breach, you need at least two hard breaches, you need the Thatcher. And the, like, like I said in Villa, the Valkyrie cams are quite, the, I think all the common spots have been found out and it's very hard to find any um, like different Valkyrie uh, places. So that's why I don't think the Valky, uh, the IQ is that important. Um, and plus like if you want to see like a cave for a wall, I mean, you, you know where the bandits are going to be, you know where the caves are going to be, the, the walls are like, <laughs> they're just out in plain sight. It's, it's very easy to know where all the electronics are. My second to last best map would probably be Coastline. Because it's a very small map, um, you don't, the only good thing you'd need the IQ for is if they throw back the cams outside, which is very rare unless you've got a team that's very aggressive. Um, everything else is quite easy to see. There's, everyone throws back the cams in very common spots. Um, it's really hard to actually uh, hide back the cams on this map considering everything is so bright and open. And I just, I wouldn't say IQ is really needed on this map. And then the last map, I'd probably say Border, same as Coastline, it's a very small map. Uh, the only good thing it's going to be used for, again, is outside cams or maybe if they, the team starts throwing a cam in CCTV because CCTV has a lot of uh, debris that you can make so you can hide the cams in the debris which makes it even harder to see and spot while you're in there. So taking the IQ would probably just only benefit that. Other than that, I don't see a natural reason. I mean, Echo, you, you can, where the bomb sites are played, you can just join out where the Echo drones are. You can hear them as well. They're quite loud on this map for some reason. I don't know why. And uh, yeah, I just... I don't think IQ would be that good on this map. The best combinations for IQ would be uh, probably the Thatcher. Thatcher's the best one, especially on Cafe. Uh, like I said, you can just go above IQ where the yeah, ADSs are, throw through Thatchers. Maybe if you're lucky, you can get two of one Thatcher. Uh, and that's all the ADSs on their map clear. So if you took like four nades, you know, you don't have to worry about ADSs. You can just chuck them, take a ying, just throw them. Nothing's going to catch it, nothing's going to stop it. Capital could also be a good one as well. Say if you see, see a, uh, the enemy on, a, like, on their cams or whatever, giving their team information, if you IQ scan it, you can see the, the little phone, like where they're set on the phone. Say if we're on a map like Border, there's a guy half wall, probably be on Marshall and Echo. Uh, you'll be able to see if they get on the cams to give off information. If you do notice that, you could uh, com uh, combo it with uh, the Capital. The Capital basically has two sets of smokes and two fires that you can shoot out of a crossbow. Um, so obviously if the, guy, the enemy is on their cams and you flame him without him knowing or droning him, he's going to die. It's a free kill, one of the, probably be a very impactful kill as well. Uh, IQ is also good with Dockerby, considering Dockerby rings phones, uh, you can hear the vibration of the phones or whatever. So when the defenders go to answer their phones, uh, you can IQ above, like say if you're above and the site's below, you can IQ above, the, uh, above where they are and you'll see them answer the phones and start tapping it and that's when you start shooting them through the floor. Uh, it's very hard to do because most teams kind of ignore the docking calls in competitive play or they have like me jammers or whatever. But like in ranked you probably get away with it quite a, quite a lot considering Dockerby is, is a very annoying 
operator to have in your team, or if you're defending, sorry. And uh, yeah, so that's why they'd work well. Oh yeah. Uh, IQ would also work well with Maverick. Uh, on a map like Bank, if they bring Cade, uh, you can IQ scan where the Cades are, and the Maverick can just come over, and instead of wasting two whole gas uh, charges on the hatch, you can literally just waste one, shoot the Cade, hit banner it off, and then you have uh, more Maverick for just more hatches. Uh, a couple of tips I'd have with IQ is um, a gadget takes a while to bring out, um, so you have to be very cautious of where, you, where you're standing, especially on a map like Consulate, if you're outside uh, trying to look for Valkyrie cams or whatnot, and you're sat there with your pistol and scanner and you're shooting these cams, it's, ve like, it's very hard to just turn around and start shooting the enemy if they jump out the windows on you. Uh, so you need to be prepared for that. Um, you also, it's, it's kind of better if, because most people play the IQ and they shoot the Echo Drones, Bandits, whatnot, everything like that, when you can actually just coordinate to your team Tell them like there's a there's an echo drone here. I, I can I can't shoot it because I'm like a I'll just expose myself with a pistol and scanner out while shooting an echo drone. It's very risky. Uh, so you can get your teammates to either like factory it or just nade it. You know, ash charge. There's a lot of think there's a lot of possibilities that you could uh, possible outcomes that you can do just from calling out where the actual inf uh, echo drones and stuff are. IQ is also used as an entry fragger as well. Um, this is why I like running the 552, 48 damage. You know. Depending on what your role is and what your job you have, or what job you have to do, uh, when you're running around with a 552, it's very easy to entry frag. Considering you, sh you have to only hit three bullets on a on a one armor, like uh, three bullets on a two, and then it's like four or five on a three. So her gun makes makes it very easy to just walk around and shoot people, while also her gadget is very powerful. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, make sure you go like and subscribe to uh, the Navi Rainbow Six YouTube channel. Uh, make sure you follow us on social media so you can keep up to date on what we are doing in, in the team and I uh, hope you have a good day.